Welcome to Yukanic. Today on Yukanic, we have a vehicle here, and we're going to go over the process to be able to check the compression on this vehicle. Say you have checked, your vehicle won't start. You have the cranking power, being that your starter is working to crank over the engine, and you're not getting it to be able to start. So we've checked for the spark and showed the process of how you would check spark. And this works for, for all the vehicles. And now we're going to check the compression because you need your spark, compression, and fuel. And those are the three main things you need for your engine to at least start and run. Now there'll be other concepts that you need for your engine to run um, in the manner that it needs to, but those are the three main things that you need for it to run. And so we are going to go over the process to be able to check in compression. And so to start with, we'll need to remove, um, you would remove all the coils if you can check the compression in every single cylinder and you would uh, be checking them in every cylinder and see that they are pretty close to in the same spec as all the others and to see where it's at and check your manual, manual for your vehicle to know what the spec is for your engine. This happens to be just a four cylinder. So we have cylinder one, two, three, and four. And if you're at a V6, you would do the same thing on all cylinders as well as the V8, right? Of uh, checking your compression. So to start with, you'll just need a uh, basic uh, compression tester where you can get at your local auto parts store, or you could even um, probably do a, a, a free rental program from some of your local auto parts stores to be able to check your compression. So we need to remove that spark plug, or you would remove them all, but we'll just show you how it's done, right? So remove this spark plug. This one happens to be a size 14 on this particular vehicle, but whatever vehicle you have, this process is what you will do to check your compression. So we remove our spark plug. We see how it looks. It does actually look pretty good. And so we'll set that aside because we're going to check the compression. So you'll take your compression tester um, tube here, and to be able to install it, this your compression tester will come with different attachments. You find the one that matches the threads and the concepts of your vehicle, and then we just be able to install this, and we install it by hand, and we allow that O-ring to do what it's designed to do. So we're going to drop this down in there. And this right here, we are doing a... It's a dry compression at the moment. We're going to check our compression dry first. And what we're going to get with a, a dry compression test is we're going to get the true compression of what it is when there is no oil seal that is potentially sealing up the uh, around the, uh, the rings and whatnot. And so we're going to do our, our dry one to see where we stand. And then we'll show you the process of how to do a wet compression test on your vehicle. So we have our gauge sitting here. I'm going to go crank the engine for a few, just a few revolutions, and we'll see where our pressure gauge um, sits at. Also, one last thing before you do do this, you would want to make sure that you've probably, you've disconnected the fuel filter, or not the fuel filter, the fuse for the fuel pump, as well as the ignition, so that you don't have um, spark fuses and or relays that control those units. All right, so we cranked it over a few couple of revolutions and we now have our compression and we have our compression sitting at about uh, 210. So that is our um, dry compression test and we have a very good compression. So if you have that grain of compression, you don't really need, need to do the wet compression test and you have good enough compression that your vehicle should start. You know, that your next step on this process would be to check for your, um, to be check your fuel system if you're not getting it, your vehicle to start. Or there could be another sensor that's causing it not to, to start properly. So um, we'll let the air off, the pressure out of there, and we'll do what's called the wet compression test. Now your wet compression test is really more to tell you whether you have the cylinders are worn or the rings around the uh, pistons are worn and you're getting a lot of blow by of the, uh, the pistons. You, you're you're going to find out um, better information on there 
of potentially where it's coming from. So you'll find out whether it's coming from the pistons themselves or whether it's a head gasket or even a cracked head. So we're going to put a, uh, a little bit of oil in there and we don't want to put a lot. Just a small couple squirts, just enough that it's going to get in that cylinder. It's going to coat the top of the cylinder head or not cylinder head at the top of the piston and around the rings. And now we go back to putting our um, compression tester back in. And we're going to go ahead and give it a couple of revolution cranks there and see um, how the compression turns out. All right, so we did a couple of revolutions there, and we've now got closer to two. We now have closer to 240 out of here versus the 210. So we definitely got um, some more compression out of it, but we were well over what would be most spec to run the vehicle at the 210. Now, and so we did the wet compression test at 240, and so we did increase some uh, some more sealing capabilities in there and got a stronger compression. But if you had somewhere down here of 90 or, or lower and you got a lot better, then you would know that basically your cylinder has worn out and you would need to be doing um, a whole engine rebuild. But being that we had such great compression, this just was just showing the process of doing a wet test. As this portion wouldn't have been necessary, except it does confirm, it would confirm on which side you potentially may be losing your your pressure from. So that there is just your basic of doing your compression check and checking the compression of your engine. There's one other option that you can do what's called a leak down test that takes a different um, type of tester. You have two different gauges on it. You're going to feed pressure into the engine to, through the cylinder head here and you'll need to have the the cylinder that you're working on to be a top dead center and then to be able to pressurize it and then it'll hold that pressure and then that way you're able to find out for sure where that air or where you're if there is a leak where it's going whether it's going through the intake or um, the exhaust valves and or um, any other ports through the um, head gasket or whatnot um, that's a way that you can do the full on leak down test which is for even further diagnostic. But the basics are you need to have spark, you need to have compression, and you would definitely need to have fuel for your engine to start and to run. Uh, there could be some other sensors that potentially would cause it that your engine won't start. But if you have those three things going on, then you're in a good space to be able to, to start there. Uh, thanks for watching Mechanic, where you can be the mechanic.